Second down and two. Marrero fakes the pitch, drops back to pass, throws across the middle, has a man. It's Byer. He makes the catch at the 50 and is dragged down across midfield at the RPI 45-yard line. Herman takes a snap, drops back to pass, looks left, stands in the pocket, rolls out, and he's sacked from behind. Marrero keeps it up the middle, makes one man miss, spins, tries to lower his head, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Jonathan Marrero from 14 yards out. Herman has wide receivers split out to either side. Takes a snap, fakes the handoff, drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, throws it down the sideline, and it's going to be intercepted by Anthony White. He's at the 40, the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, calling for some blockers, knocked out of bounds at the 8-yard line, first and goal, Springfield. We are back to Alonzo Stagfield Campus of Springfield College. And while we were away, RPI move the ball a little bit but they're going to have to bring on the punt unit for the second time this half as the Springfield defense forces the three and out again back to punt Austin Caswell he pinned the Springfield offense back on the one last time Mike Davis back deep to receive 21-21 our score 735 to go in the third quarter high snap Caswell brings it down gets the punt off it's a good one sends Davis back inside the 20 where he feels it turns around makes one man miss gets across the 15 Flags thrown, Davis across the 25-30, and then is tripped up just short of the 35 at about the 34-yard line, but those flags in the vicinity of block in the back. Pat Hogan is the man who made the final stop on that play, which will, of course, come all the way back. On the three and out for RPI, it was Andrew Armato with a one-yard run, then a five-yard run, and then Mike Herman, an incomplete pass intended for Reggie Colas, Kajdan Arain with a breakup there. And in fact, that is a block in the back. It's going to go against Corey Kaiser. A 10-yard penalty will push Springfield College back considerably after a nice return by Mike Davis. Davis made a few men miss, got the ball up to about the 34-35 yard line. But unfortunately, all that negated after the penalty. And Springfield, instead of starting on the 34, is going to be starting on the 7. So once again, the Pride offense, they're back up against the wall after another nice punt by Austin Caswell. Marrero under center, 7.20 to go, 21-21 our score. Hand off to Alta Vista, works the near side, takes a hit, falls forward, and gains about 8 on the play. Alta Vista. Going to get there. He will be the first man to the century mark. I'm convinced of it. Alta Vesta now up over 90 yards for the day, averaging 6.4 yards per touch. Alta Vesta is that guy today, you can tell. Second down and two. Marrero fakes the pitch, drops back to pass, throws across the middle, has a man. It's Byer. He makes the catch at the 50 and is dragged down across midfield at the RPI 45-yard line. A beautiful ball there by Jonathan Marrero on the play action hit Byer in stride for the big game. It'll be first and ten Springfield ball officially marked at the 43-yard line. Well, it is so much fun to watch Jonathan Marrero throw the ball. The ball comes out so tight, it spirals so beautifully, and when he has time, he throws it right on his spot. Looking to pass again, throws downfield, and it's Poggio with the catch. Back-to-back -back completions, and it's Springfield moving the ball quickly downfield. Another first down due to the arm of Jonathan Marrero. Marrero now four of five on the day, and he has found his rhythm. Ball marked at the 28-yard line. Marrero under center, wide receiver split out the other side. He's going to drop back again to pass. A lose pressure, now he's going to tuck it and run, and brings it forward for a gain of about five. A nice run there by Marrero as everything was covered downfield. And a fearless Marrero, indeed, who runs uh, kind of like he enjoys it into the waiting arms of Ted Abriel and Anthony Pila, two defensive players for RPI that average about 260. I mean, these guys are monsters compl compared to the slight Marrero. Ball goes to Alta Vista up the middle, and he has enough for the first down, plus a couple more, and it'll be another first down for Springfield. Ball inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. A good run there by Alta Vista as Springfield looking to break this 21-21 tie. 555 to go here in the third quarter. Marrero keeps it up the middle, makes one man miss, spins, tries to lower his head, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Jonathan Marrero from 14 yards out, and Springfield takes the lead 27-21 with 5.43 left here in the third quarter of play.
Kickoff is away. It is taken in by Strunk. Strunk across the 25, the 30, and is dragged down at the 34-yard line. So that is where RPI will take over. And, I mean, you, you bring up that point. Jonathan Marrero just does so much on yeah. the field. He can throw it. He can run it. He can he adds a little wrinkle. He makes men miss. He just does so much out there. I'd say you could move him to split end or, or one of the wing backs, but I, then you'd miss out on that arm. It's clearly the best arm on the team. Without a doubt, I think. If I were making the decision, I'd, I'd go with Jonathan Marrero at this point. RPI will look to answer back here, though. Three wide receivers near side, one split to the far side. One man in the backfield. Herman takes a snap. It's a low one, looks right, throws right, and it's caught by Weber. And Weber will have enough for the first down on the far sideline. Brian the ball Staub. To the 44. Brian Staub, the senior cornerback from Brick, New Jersey, makes the stop there, but not before this chains have been moved. The second, the second half has a nice little pace to it. Springfield College finally has that lead after leading in almost every other major statistical category. They finally have the lead in the one that matters at the end of the game. 28-21 is the score. Herman takes a snap, drops back to pass, looks left, stands in the pocket, rolls out, and he's sacked from behind. Max Nasowitz with his 12th sack of the season, grabbed him by the ankles. And it'll bring up second and long. Nasowitz has to hustle off the field. His helmet came off. That new rule this year where if your helmet comes off, you got to sit out of play. But Nasowitz, his team leading 12th sack, brings up second and very long. And the, the pace at which Nasowitz got up and sprinted off the field speaks to the way that the Springfield College defense has played in the second half. Still has yet to give up anything resulting in a, a threat let alone a point here in the second half with almost 11 minutes have played here in, in, in the second frame goes as a loss of 10 second and 23 wide receivers near side one far side herman takes a snap he's going to keep it go up the middle and he's going to get hit and dropped after a gain of about seven and that'll bring up third and long with 415 to go in the third freshman kajed in the rain one of the men who make sure that Mike Herman knows that he is on Springfield College grounds. So officially, it'll be third and 15 with four minutes to go in the third. Springfield in the lead, 28-21. The defense looking to get that offense back on the field. Herman has other ideas as he sends three wide receivers to the home side, one to the far side, takes a snap, drops back to pass. Nasowitz back in the game, double team. Now Herman steps up throws and it is over the head of his intended receiver incomplete that was tj strunk who was the intended receiver and it'll bring out the punt unit for the third time in the half 